everyone. Welcome back. This is Joni Stahl. Hope everybody's doing good. Today, I want to talk about four powerful words in the Bible. Now, of course, the whole Bible is a book of power and every word in there has power. But there are four particular ones I'm going to start off with and then I'm just going to run because I started to put this together and then I started to feel kind of constrained and I'm like, no, I hate to be controlled, but I want to go with the flow of the Holy Spirit. And I believe that when we are filled with the Holy Spirit, you don't need a whole lot of notes because Jesus says, he that believeth in me, as the scripture saith, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water, meaning the word is alive of itself. Okay. So I'm all about doing that, but I just want to begin here. And like I said, when I am on these videos, I wanted to always feel like I'm paying a visit to your house and I'm just sharing a good thing. Okay. Because that's basically what I do with my friends. Like when I'm not doing this with you guys, I'll call a friend here and there and go, I just want to share with you something that the Lord showed me. I thought, I think it's so powerful. And so I consider this to be not just that you're in my classroom, but also a time of fellowship with each other. So here goes. Now, four of the most powerful words that I have seen are powerful in the respect that it adds kind of a force of power behind the rest of the words of God, the statements of God. And the whole Bible is full of promises. It's full of prophecy. It's full. It is jam-packed. And there is no one in the whole world that will ever be able to have complete, absolute understanding of the whole thing. But to me, I look at the Bible as something like a treasure hunt, right? Because it says in Proverbs, it says, if you seek for it as for silver and dig for it as for hidden treasure, it says, if you cry out for knowledge and call aloud for understanding, you know, you got to dig for it. So those of us who truly love the Lord are born again. Um, yeah, the Bible is daunting when we first pick it up when we're young. We're like, wow. But to me, I was like, wow, but I'm just going to dig in. And I've been digging in ever since. And there really is such a reward to reading your Bible. It really, there is such a reward because you have to understand that this is the living word. See, heaven and earth will pass away. It will pass away. But the word of the Lord remains forever. Now, Jesus Christ is the manifestation of his word. The, the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. Of that is the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So when we read the Bible, see, the Holy Spirit, I think, the sec, not I think, I believe that he's looking to see if you really want to learn. Because if you really, really don't have a heart to read the Bible, it's pretty much going to stay shut up to you, okay? But what I want to do is I want to encourage you because, see, let, let me start here. In the beginning when I got saved and I was reading the Bible, it was such a rooting and grounding time for me, right? That's like how it is for all of us when we get saved. Many people um, have little children. You might have been a little children. I know I've talked to some of you who said, I was always in it from babyhood. And so your parents were Christians. You were always hearing them talk about the Lord and the word. And then you started learning about it in your little Sunday schools. And you started learning all the little things. But a day came where you grew up, right? Where you grew up and you were reading the Bible for yourself. Well, so there comes a point when you really begin to engage the Holy Spirit. Like, you know, I think about the words that it says in 1 Corinthians 13 that Paul the Apostle says. He said, when I was a child, I spake like a child. I understood like a child. I thought like a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. So there's a point in, I think that you can relate with me right now, that there was a point in your life where something just clicked in you just like that where all of a sudden you wanted to be in control of what you were learning. You didn't just want to sit and listen to what people tell you what it said, right? I don't know about you, but there came something in me where I was like, I want to know for myself. Like, I don't just want to be at church every Sunday, which is fine. And I always want to say this is, I'm never, ever against people being in church. I encourage people, if you love your church, stay in it. There's a lot of wonderful pastors out there. 
many of us are not in church and there's many people through the centuries that are in the kingdom that never once stood a foot in church. So it has to do with your heart wanting to know the Lord through his written word. But I want to stick to this one thing. I don't want to go into church history and anything else. I just want to stick to this because I have a couple things I want to say about it. So back to what I was saying, wasn't there a day in your life where you were like, I just want to know for myself. And then as you began to read, you weren't just satisfied with just reading that. You're like, I want to know what it says. Then you start to study history and you start to dig in. But notice without even that part, the Holy Spirit begins to engage you. He begins to vitalize his word in you. It begins to be, go down deep inside of you because it's living. It's the living word. Okay. And a lot of you um, might think, well, I try to remember the word. Um, I read it and I try to remember it. But I read something this morning and I thought that is so perfect. And it was in one of my favorite devotional books by J.H. Jowett. Um, he was alive. He was an Englishman back in um, the turn of the century. But he said that a Chinese man said to him, um, I have trouble remembering his word, but the only way I now have found to remember his word is I read it and I do it. And another way is when you read it, begin to share it. Because the more you read it and do it and read it and share it, it becomes a part of you. It's almost like the word becoming flesh. Now, I don't, I don't, I'm not saying Jesus is the word that becomes flesh, but you know what I mean? Like it has its action in the world. And that word cannot just be just for our own. That word is alive. It's meant to go out. It has a force behind it. You know, it says... By the word of the Lord was a heavens made and the host of them by the breath of his mouth. That's Psalm 115, I believe it's 17. So when we read the word, it's we, we, we go through seasons of growth in it. Okay. So we have our rooting and grounding season. We have our, I'm going through trials. I'm learning how to navigate through it. I'm learning character building. So there's all these seasons that you go through, but when you get older, um, those things are in you and you're ever growing, you're ever reading. But the point I'm making is there's going to come a time where you're going to slow down just because you're older and you're just reading it slower. It truly is honey. You know, when you pour out honey, it just doesn't splash out. It thickly drips out. And I look at the Bible like a honeycomb and the words, you know, it says that thy words were found and I did eat them and they were the re joy and the rejoicing of my soul. That's your, that's, um, I believe Jeremiah chapter 15. Anyways. So this was a few years ago and I came across this scripture and it had to do with the angel answering Mary Magdalene, when she came to Jesus's tomb. And she saw the stone rolled away and the angel sitting upon it. And he said to her, why seek ye the living among the dead? He said, he is not, for he is not here. He's risen. Just as he said, come and see the place where the Lord lay. But the one part that really stuck out with me is when he said, just as he said. And all of a sudden, it just exploded with me. And all of it, and I sat there in the Lord and I began to all of a sudden, all these scriptures came rushing into my mind from the years that I've read them. And just because, you know, the more you read it, the more you begin to memorize it, you know, by osmosis, you just keep going over it and going over. It. It's like the treading out of the grapes and the wine vat. The more you tread it out, the more the word gives, gives it, gives you the juice of it. Okay. And and I started to think of scriptures that would come to my mind. And just like a couple I have here, like um, in Philippians 4, 19, but my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. And when I thought about that word while I was sitting there, I thought, just as he said. And then I thought, you know, furthermore, but my God, um, for the Lord God is a sun and shield. He shall bestow grace and glory, and no good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. Blessed is the man who puts his trust in the Lord. And that then the, those four words popped in, hitched itself on right after that. 
just as he said. I started to think of other scriptures, Psalm 91, that he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He, you know, I mean, I was thinking about that. You know, it, he shall call upon me and I will answer him. And I will set him upon high because he's known my name, just like he said he would. And all of a sudden the Bible just took on from those four words, the Bible just took on this whole, like, I, I like the, there, it was like an extra added source of he's going to keep his word. Okay. And so I just, I'm just going to take off running here because I don't want to get totally into reading everything, but I want to jump into this next part. Okay. Because you're seeing the same things that I am seeing in the world. Right. So I think about all these articles that I see and I do look at them. Okay. Now some Christians feel that it's just a little too negative for them. Um, they'd rather focus their mind on things above. Look, whatever you do, that's between you and the Lord. For myself, I want to know what's going on. I want to have my finger on the pulse so I can pray for my family. So I could be aware of this spirit of murder that's been taken over the world and the enemy, how he has just been thrashing families. And I mean, I can go down the list. I don't want to use this time to go down all the wicked things I've been seeing because I have been seeing things where I'm like, I don't ever think that I don't even think I would have ever seen anything this wicked in my entire life. And not to mention in the animal kingdom, not to mention the mass bird die offs and, and these earthquakes that are you know, supposed to be coming. And we are such at the cusp of things happening, right? But I was thinking about just as he said, and my mind started to go into that prophetic, that prophetic area where, you know, we can nail down all the promises of God. There are so many promises of God that when you believe upon those promises, don't forget to say, just as you said, Lord, when you said that you would rise again, that you would be delivered into the hands of the chief priests and the Pharisees, and that you would suffer for three days, you know, that you would suffer at their hands and be crucified, and that you would rise again on the third day, you did it just as you said. And I noticed that I, and, and notice when you say that to him, it's not that you're reminding him because he forgot. You're letting him know, just as you say, I stand on the believing side of what you say. You know, in, in, um, in John chapter 5, 22, it says that the son, that the, uh, that the father judges no man, but has committed all judgment uh, over unto the son because he's the son of man, meaning that he was born of a virgin and became a man. So now he has, now he has the right to judge man, but he will not judge them just, you know, well, what did you do? What do you, what, you know what I'm saying? Like, of course, everything's going to be judged according to what people have done in the body, whether good or evil. And that's if you are born again and you wind up at the Bema seat of Christ, which is the reward platform. But the thing is, He's going to keep his word until the day he takes you off of the earth. Okay. And he's going to do it his way and his own style, but never forget those words to say to him, just as you said, David said that to the Lord himself, he was praying to the Lord and he said, Lord, as thou hast said, okay. And not to mention Moses did the same thing. Now these two men were mighty. All right. Other prophets said that, as thou hast said. Now they did that because they knew what God said. And when you know what God says about something, that means it's done. Once the Lord has spoken, who can let it? His word goes forth into the earth. It will never return. It will go on and on and on. It, it is an eternal stream. So when you read his word, you are not reading a word that just mere mortals have read. We know that the word has been written by men of old who by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit wrote it. And God and Jesus Christ is the manifestation of the word. So to the, for, for Jesus not to keep his word, that's to deny his own self. 
and he's not able to deny himself. That's what it says in 2 Timothy chapter 2, uh, verses, um, uh, chapter, I think it's chapter 13. And so it says, if, if we abide, if we do not have any faith, he abides faithful still, because he's not able to deny himself. And if you are in Christ, then Christ is in God, and that is an eternal thing. And when you read the word, remember that is his word is an eternal word. You know, so I'm, we're all looking forward. I'm, let, let me, let me just back up a little bit. Of course, we're looking forward to the coming of the Lord, whatever your eschatological position is, we're looking for him to come. Okay. And I was thinking about how the Lord's getting ready to wrap this all up. Okay. And I was thinking about just as he said, and I was thinking about all the, I mean, I, I, I've been, I'm just going to say this. I, I've been reading stories of, I've never seen it before in my life, mothers and fathers murdering their own children. I mean, wholesale. I cannot believe the cruelty people are showing to their animals. Outright brutal cruelty. Um, I cannot believe how many people I see missing on the internet, girls, young girls, little boys. We know that the sex trafficking industry is satanic. We see that Satan is sending forth a flood out of his mouth to destroy everybody and to take everybody down. We see it. If you're alive, you're seeing it just like me. But I was saying, Lord, just as you said, and I was thinking about what it said in Revelation uh, 21, 14. And this is what this is. Okay. I'm just going to say it. And he will, he will wipe away every tear from their eyes and there will be no longer, there will be no longer any death. There will no longer be any mourning or crying or pain for the former things have passed away. Let me tell you something, this world that you were living in right now, it's getting ready to pass away just as he said it will just as he said it is and he and he even says the hour is coming when the dead will hear the voice of god and rise again some to the resurrection of righteousness and others to the resurrection of damnation let me tell you what i've been sensing very much lately because i'm just going to let this roll is that i have been very much sensing that god is really really pushing, not pushing because he doesn't push, but I feel kind of like, you know, the conductor when he rings a bell and he cries out last call. Let me tell you a dream that the Lord brought to my memory. I had it years ago, but that doesn't matter if you have a dream years ago. If it's from the Lord, he gave it to you a long time ago to show you things that are coming to pass. When nothing is even looking that it's moving and it makes no sense and it makes it more real when it does happen. But I had this dream that I saw myself on a train and the train was jam packed where there was people even standing, you know, they hold on to things like, you know, hanging from the roof. I don't take trains, but I don't need to ride a train to know what a train looks like on the inside. But I saw in my dream the entire train was jam packed and everybody, and it was light on the inside, but outside it was night. And everybody on that train was full of the power of joy. And I knew that this was a train that was going somewhere to heaven because everybody on it was so full of exhilaration, so full full of the power of joy. You can feel the power of the endless life inside of this train. And the motor was running. You know how it starts up and the engine's going and everybody's waiting. It, it, and I knew that any second that train was going to take off and everybody couldn't wait. You know that feeling when you're on a vacation, you're on an airplane, you're about ready to go to a awesome destination and they start up the engine and it starts taxing and you're super excited this now that is nothing compared to what the energy was inside of this train 
And all of a sudden I looked out and I saw a woman in the distance in the dark and she was holding her Bible, a little old lady with little white hair running as fast as she can, waving her hand over her head, like way over her head like this, running toward the train, like, wait, wait. And she got onto the train. And as soon as um, she got onto the train, um, the door closed. And then we knew we're going. And the Lord has brought that to my mind because I believe we are soon going home. I just feel it. And I'm not talking about a soulish sensation. I'm not talking about just because I read something or I've been in the word my whole life and I'm seeing all these things. You see, we're in this world. But we're not of this world. We're pilgrims on a journey. We're sojourners, just like all our forefathers were. And this world and its present condition, it is going away forever. You know, we are people that look for a new heaven and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. And that day is coming, just like he said it would just as he said it would. He's going to come and every eye shall see, every knee shall bow. I mean, every eye will see him come in the clouds, just like he said they would see him. When the men, when Jesus rose again from the men, from the people of 500, when he went into the clouds, and those two angels said, ye men of Galilee, why stand ye here gazing up? That's 111 of acts for this same jesus who hath why stand you gazing up into the heavens for this same jesus who has gone up into the heavens shall, shall in like wise manner come back from the heavens and we could add just like he said and when he said behold he said you believe in god believe also in me in my father's house are many mansions Behold, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. Now where I am, there ye may be also. Just like he said he would. Just like he said he would. And when he says to you, when you start, to, when you begin to see these things, come to pass upon this earth, all these nations rising against nations, earthquakes in various places. When you begin to see the love of many wax cold and wars and rumors of war and all these things. And he said, begin to look up for the kingdom of heaven is at hand because he said, when he comes, he's going to receive us, right? Just like he said, everything that he said in that word, you better remember this. It's going to be just as he said. Remember that. So when you read your Bibles, don't read it as a Bible. Don't read it as some literature book. Don't read it like, well, I believe that the Lord says this but I don't know. It's going to be just as he said, stamp that stamp. Those four words, Matthew 28, six, never forget those words. Just as he said. And if you're not born again, the time is now to be born again from above. Do you want to be born again? Because Jesus says, marvel not at this. You must be born again. And you don't want to miss out on heaven. Heaven is a very real place. But only those that are born again will go. So you have to be born again. And Jesus says that flesh and blood, it says in the word, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of heaven. 
It says, but that which is born of the Spirit. Now, if you want to be born again, the time is now. Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your heart. As in the day of provocation, like the Israelites, they said they didn't want to hear his voice anymore. They hardened their hearts, and you know what happened to them? They all perished. They all died in the wilderness. But today, if you hear his voice, hear it speaking through mine. Hear him speaking. Because you do not know the day or the hour. We do not know the day or the hour that our Lord comes. But we know that we're in this season. Do you want to be born again? Because listen, you don't know if you'll be alive tomorrow or by the end of tonight. You don't know. I'm not trying to scare you. But we're in a body of death. This body is just made for this world. And there's another world that Jesus has for us. And that's reality. People that have gone there and have come back, life after death experiences, they'll tell you it is the heavenly country. And it's filled up with people. And it's filling up with people. Let me just stop right here before I'm going to go on to lead you in the Lord's Prayer, which I want to talk about that too briefly you see i watched something yesterday on tv i watched the news not just one thing i was watching um report after report after report and it was so awful and it was the local news and it was so like i was just listening to it and it was like um, two people are dead this morning on the 405 freeway. Um, there are no survivors. Uh, there was a woman found shot to dead, death by her husband in her home. Um, uh, there was a famous rapper, you know, whatever. Um, I don't know if you know, I never knew his name. Gunned down just right in front of his store all day. I mean, I just kept hearing like one thing after another, you know, of just tragic accidents, people taking selfies and falling off the cliff. And I read these stories. And as far as I can tell, none of them were saved. If they were saved, that's between them and the Lord. I want to be careful. But imagine that they weren't saved, that they led a short life in comparison to eternity. Because hell is a very real place. Now, hell is empty right now. Right now, there is a place called Hades. It's an intermediary compartment of the wicked dead, those who have rejected Christ. And it's filling up. Hell hath enlarged. It should say Hades. Really, it's the rendering for that is Hades. Hath enlarged its mouth to receive the multitude. But you don't want to go there. Because at the end of the thousand-year millennial reign, Hades will empty itself out at the great white throne judgment. And where you, the people that are, will wind up there will be thrown into the everlasting lake of fire, burning with fire and brimstone forever and ever. Now you can read about that in Revelation 20. And it's really, really a judicial scene. You know, it says, I'll just say it really quick, okay? John the, John the Revelator said, first Satan and his demons get cast in forever into the lake of fire where they will be tormented forever and ever. And then he says, and I saw, I saw one who sat upon the throne whose face the earth and heaven fled from and can find nowhere to go. And I saw standing before him, I saw the dead standing before him great and small, and the books were opened, and many books were opened, and the dead were judged out of those books according to the things that they did while they were in their body. And the sea gave up the dead, and they were judged. And it says, and whosoever's name was not found written in the Lamb's book of life 
was cast into the lake of everlasting lake of fire, burning with brimstone. This is the second death. And you don't want to be found at the great white throne judgment. So if you are not saved and you were watching this, I'm going to invite you to be saved. But I want you to understand something. The Holy Spirit knows if you're serious. Because you have to receive Jesus Christ, the gospel, which is your eternal life, the confession to him that you are a sinner, that you are sorry for your sins, that you ask him to save you. And every word that I'm going to pray with you right now He's going to know whether you mean it or not. But you have to do it with all your heart, for it says in Romans chapter 10, But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, near you. It is in your heart, right? It's got to begin in your heart. Even in your mouth, that is the word of faith, which we profess. That if you confess the Lord, that God hath risen, he hath been risen from the dead, Thou shalt be saved. For it is a heart that man believeth unto righteousness, but it is a mouth that confession is made unto salvation. And in that very moment that you turn to Jesus Christ with all your heart, he's going to take you seriously. And then you will become a new creation. All things will pass away. You'll become a new creature. And this is the time to do it because he's coming again and you don't want to be left here. So I'm going to lead you right now in this prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, I come before you. I confess to you that I am a sinner needing forgiveness for all my sins. Lord Jesus, I'm tired of running. I'm tired of this life. I want your mercy. I want to be born again. I want eternal life. I ask you to forgive me for all of my sins and name them right now, whatever they are. I'm going to keep going later on. Watch this part and pause it so you can get before the Lord and name those things that the Holy Spirit He's going to move in you to confess those sins. Don't worry. You don't have to say a million of those sins. Just what you feel in your heart. You want to tell him you're sorry about. I'm going to continue. Lord Jesus, I ask you to forgive me where I have held people in unforgiveness because your word says, that if I do not forgive others, the Father in heaven will not forgive me. I trust you, Jesus, to give me the power to forgive them. For in my heart, I say to you, I forgive them. And Jesus, I ask you to save me now, to become my savior, to become my Lord and master, and to please write my name now 
in your Lamb's book of life. That Jesus, that you will enter into me by your Holy Spirit. That he will enter into me as the seal of my salvation and the earnest of my redemption in Jesus Christ into the family of God the Father. And I thank you. I receive you now. I receive the free gift of eternal life now and forevermore by the blood of Jesus Christ and by the finished work of your cross in Jesus name. And now if you have prayed that prayer, I'm going to pray over you right now. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray over everyone that has prayed this prayer. I thank you, Lord, that they have turned in this final closing minutes of the church age to come to you for salvation. Now fill them with the power of your Holy Spirit. That you fill them now full of the power of your Holy Spirit. That you break every evil thing off of them. And you break off every evil spirit that has bound them up until this moment and forevermore. That you drive every evil thing the enemy has had planned for them, Jesus. Now that they are the sons and daughters of the Most High God. I ask you now, God, to bless these people, to bless you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that you will be filled with all the glory and power of Jesus Christ, and that Jesus give you a hunger and a thirst for his righteousness, for you have now been made righteous in his sight by his blood, and that the Lord by the power of his spirit, begin to open up your understanding that the Lord give unto you his spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of God. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling and that you would be partakers of the inheritance and, and the glory and riches of the saints in light. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And amen. So welcome to the family of God. You're more than welcome to write to me. And if this is you, reach out because you're going to need some discipling and I'm happy to help you with that. Anyways, I'm not going to keep going on, but one last thing I'm going to say, don't forget those words. Just as he said, he's coming back. Just as he said, I can't wait. Aren't you glad? Aren't you glad that Jesus keeps his word. I sure am. Because when we're in heaven, we're going to say, Lord, you did it. We're here just as you said we would. <laughs> I can't wait for that day. All right, you guys, I hope this was a blessing to you. Like and share this video. Um, definitely share it to as many people as you know need to hear this message be built up, have joy, keep looking up, keep your ears tuned for the last Trump. I just have a feeling we're going to hear it soon. Have a wonderful day. Um, 
I want to thank you for all my new subscribers. I want to thank you for all my new Patreon and my older Patreon supporters that have been with me from the beginning. I just really can't thank you enough. Um, please pray about becoming a Patreon uh, subscriber. It really does help out this ministry so much. Thank you for those of you who are committed to praying for this ministry. I love it so much. And I just feel like God is just moving so much in me. I just feel like, I know this is crazy and I'm just going to say it because I really feel this. I feel that the Lord is moving in my life and I don't care. Maybe I'm a little premature, but, and I do care. I always want to be careful, of course, but this is what I want to say. I have a feeling because I could feel it coming that the Lord is going to start using me um, as his vessel in more ways where he's going to start speaking through me and using me in ways that he has done before in ways of like, because I've been doing it with other people off screen that I've been doing a lot of like praying with people and people. And I, I'm only a vessel. I am just a vessel. I am a clay jar. I have nothing to boast or brag about. I am a blade of grass. Okay. A flower that quickly fadeth. But I have been seeing the Lord doing some amazing things through prayer in my life. And I have a feeling he's going to be using that for you guys. Okay. So that's all I'm going to say. Okay, because I just really like to be careful about what I say. So anyways, um, thank you for praying for this ministry. I think Jonathan's going to be with us on Friday, and I'm looking forward to that. So I love you guys so much. Um, thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. Go with the Lord, and shalom to you. All right, you guys. Bye-bye.